Hello, and welcome back to Second Take Movies, a podcast where we give movies a second look, second chance, second take, if you will. I'm your host, Preston Jenkinson, and joining me, as always, it's my co-host, Jake Twido. Bing, bong, bangalore. What's up? What's going on? Just, just really happy, man. Another Tom Cruise-filled week. Oh, yeah. I can uh, really start to believe in, in aliens and all this crazy stuff. Uh, yeah. This is probably better than the other two movies that were talking about it's yeah, definitely better I, than next week's movie i can trust me on that let's be honest this movie's not terrible if they didn't make reacher on the prom series yeah the the more accurate reacher like which i f- i have a case I really for that care. but we'll, we'll we'll get to that like it's oh yeah we're talking about jack reacher the uh yeah. 2012 tom cruise edition. i think so yeah 2012 yeah yeah yeah, yeah. uh I was trying to think of who else was in it. Um, Rosman Jai Pike. Jack Courtney. Uh, early Jack Courtney. Oh. <laughs> who plays a, a nameless, faceless thug pretty pretty well. Uh, other, the other big people I forgot were uh, David Oyelowo. David Oyelowo. Oh, yeah. Um, Robert yeah, that's, that, I, I worked on pronouncing that. <laughs> I looked at it once and said, nah, it ain't happening. Um, yeah, Robert Duvall shows up. Rosamund Pike. Uh, yep. The dad from Step Brothers. <laughs> no, that is him. Thank you. Yeah. I was trying, where, did I, where did I place him from? I place him as the guy that's in. Um, oh shoot! What's the dumb video game that Rock? The Grand Theft Auto Company. Rockstar made it, where you're like a cop from back in the day. Hold on. It's going to kill me. We're going to look this up. You're all, don't edit this out. Everyone needs to be a part of this. L.A. Noir. Oh, okay. He's a prominent actor in that game. Because, you know, they got people to do the emotion. You get yeah. bored. Watch those. It is hilarious how ridiculous. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like when, when, you, when they lie on that thing, it's like. I, I trust everybody. I always did trust and see what happened. <laughs> Uh, Jack Reacher, the story, a homicide investigator digs deeper into a case involving a strain, a trained military sniper responsible for a mass shooting. Not you really know, a homicide investigator. He's more of a, I gotta say, we're picking a lot of sniper movies all of a sudden. <laughs> Unintentionally. <laughs> I started giggling earlier today. I'm like, oh, yeah. But Jack, I mean, Jack Reacher, the character isn't all about snipers and stuff it's like nah he's a mp or he just he was a ro- military police cop that only does what's right roams town to town and whatnot um the positive review drew taylor from the playlist in terms of pure pop entertainment value you'll be hard pressed to find a more smartly constructed beautifully shot pulse pounding movie this holiday season that's right this was a christmas movie i forgot it came out, it came out in december yeah december didn't know that. Came out the week of Christmas in the U.S. Actually, the, these these early two thousands movies, I couldn't have told you when they came out. <laughs> um, they just showed weird, up. Weird association stuff. Like I remember what happened that Christmas. Yeah, and then I remember going to see it in theaters. Well, see, know. this is this is all before I started going to movies regularly. So this is like out of my wheelhouse a little bit. Free um, nerd. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Rex Reed from The Observer with our negative review. Jack Reacher is mostly grim, violent, and stupid. And I bet he's fun at party. Yeah. This also got Chris, Mc- Chris McQuarrie the um, writing and directing job of the next three Mission Impossible movies. Yeah, he... he this was... Was this the his... The last three. No, he wasn't his first with Tom Cruise, though. Mm-mm. Because he did... He, um, he definitely did The Tourist in Valkyrie. Yes. I, no, I, I think this is the first it. time they work together. No, Valkyrie. Valkyrie would be it. When it's the uh, that's the Nazi movie. I thought that was Gore Verbinski or something. Mm-mm. It's a Brian Singer directed, but I think I think Chris Mc, whatever Chris McDonald's. I think he was a writer. May not have been the primary. He was a producer for sure. You're right. He's a writer. Look at that. Also, didn't he do The Usual Suspects? That's Brian Singer. That's okay. I thought he was part of that too. I've never seen that movie. I need to. That's a pretty good movie. 
It's yeah. unfortunate that it has um, Kevin Spacey in it, but what, what's wrong what with Kevin Spacey? Do? A lot. <laughs> Is he okay? Uh, <laughs> Is he in the hospital? Is he getting better? Nope. Uh, he's very much alive. Uh, he's kind of dead, like uh, um, James Franco was dead. Oh, like that. Shoot. When did he die? <laughs> Shortly after he uh, started teaching at NYU for some reason. I don't know what happened. Yeah, you um, know what? Hey, everything's going to be okay if P. Diddy's still around, though. So I'm fine. Oh, God. <laughs> um, oh. this movie starts off and I, yeah. here's my biggest gripe about the movie it's kind of great they show you but they show you who the shooter is Yeah, there's no I, question that it's not the guy when it Why started you, I was like are they, is, does, do they show us who the actual shooter is I, was or do they like, I, I thought they hid that and they should have Like, well I mean just that kind of Shows you, like, yes, this is an actual conspiracy, I would assume. Like, this is... Yeah. It's like, you're going to be clued into some piece of the story that the characters don't have, so you know that there's a conspiracy going on. Because it's like, they have that reveal later on in the station when they bring in Jack Barr, and it's a different guy. Yeah. Yeah, so you get a pretty crazy shot sequence, shooting... Mm-hmm. The the movie does a really good job though of immediately making you question that entire thing. Like, I, I don't know. There's so, yeah, so many. Like, the way, why did he hit that shot there? Why did he do that? So the way the scope moves and he's just searching around that whole pavilion right there, and he's looking he's looking for his actual target, but he kind of hides it among four or five other people that he shoots. Yeah. Um, so right away you're introduced to Emerson, Detective Emerson. Mm-hmm. That wasn't supposed to have an accent on it. Um, I, I just love the stupidest thing, like the, the whole twist, which spoilers ahead. We're going to talk about the movie, so who gives a crap? Yeah. You're going to get it spoiled regardless. <laughs> but uh, like the guy that goes, the detective, magically finds that casing. Mm-hmm. No, there is no professional person that would leave a casing. Right. There's none. And two. But, and, and well, and Jack Reacher points that out later. Yeah. And t- I mean, the, the, the movie does a great job of like the first time I watched this, I didn't think anything about it. I was like, oh, wow, that's a break. And two, who in their bright minds says we should unload that parking meter right there? Exactly. Because um, so like a- Cruz, Tom Cruise at the end of the movie even says, "So gave you away." I, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even done that. <laughs> yeah, you were too good. Yeah, too. You're too good at framing this guy, basically. Um. So, you know, hey, they've got somebody now. They got a fingerprint. They know mm-hmm. it belongs to James Barr because they checked the coin. Um. And he's an ex sniper. It all lines up. They go to his house and they find a, the van. They find the rifle and Barr is unconscious. Mm-hmm. And they even have him on security camera, the van on security camera. Yeah, that matched the tags, matched mm-hmm. everything. So it's they brought him in. They're interrogating them, and uh, uh, that whole I don't know. I hope that's. I'm sure that's how real life is. They they but try the, to get uh, him to to confess, and he says, "Get Jack Reacher." Is all he writes on the paper. Yeah, but don't worry. He's gonna get transported. He's gonna get the tar beat out of him. <laughs> he becomes. They don't, but they, that's just like kind of mentioned. It's not really shown. They do. They show. It, well, it's kind of halfway shown. They but it's show not like, what Jack Reacher thinks happened. Yeah. Yeah, and then it's assumed. Because and then they're like, "Well, who the fuck is Jack Reacher?" And so they do their background check, and they they see that military police and he dropped off the grid several years ago has no house no bills no nothing and Just what a beaut jack reacher at this time's waking up in someone's bed sees him on tv gets on a bus and while they're talking about jack reacher jack reacher walks in and how, i think how do you tom, go ahead go ahead tom cruise plays this very well he does 
in my he maybe opinion. Maybe five seven, but I feel like he's at least six three. He had he has a like even if I met Tom Cruise in person, and I'm a foot taller than him. Like I'd crap my pants. It's it's still a presence. He's Tom Cruise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How Jack Reacher the character? I mean, it's this is kind of the same like it's not the same thing, but the same situation of James Bond. Mm-hmm. You know, it's this like he's perfect. It's great. He's not perfect, but he's invincible. He knows everything. He can do it all. Mm-hmm. I don't know the point I'm trying to make. Here we go again. Um, I don't mind him being the like I know everything person in this. It's believable. Yeah, because yeah, he's you know, a skilled you investigator. Watch the overpowered guy, and it's like, yeah, yeah, okay, he's gonna win. Well, Which I think maybe- that Jack Reacher is not really about being physically the best at everything. He, no, he just his strength is in his mind, even though he's a huge dude like Alan Richton. Who plays him in the show? Yeah. Um. So he walks. He walks in, and immediately there he's told that he's here to see Barr. They question him. He's like, "I'm just leaving. I don't care. You can't do yeah, anything." But like, Barr has been. I was, in a coma. Make, I, was, I, I was here to make sure that motherfucker's dead. <laughs> yeah, that's wild. Like, legitimately, you find out later, Barr killed people. Um. Jack Reacher called him on it. Why is it? While he was on in service, Jack Reacher called him, prosecuted him. He got off, but Jack Reacher says, "If you ever do anything like this again, I'm coming to end your life." Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, okay, you like <laughs> right away, you're like, oh no, Jack Reacher is not his friend. This is Mm-mm. not good. This is Mm-mm. real bad. But, and then uh, the, the 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 his lawyer shows up, um, who's a, a private. A, a attorney, a defense attorney who has taken on the case, I guess pro bono. Um, yeah, and she, it's weird too because yeah. like her, no one wants her to take the case. You're right, and her dad is the district attorney, which I feel like. Gergoff's disca- daddy issues really uh, well that and it has to be like conflict of interest. Yeah, I don't like, think you could do that. That would be impossible. But this, really this movie, that's not this movie's problem. It glosses over that. It says, yeah, it's fine, whatever, who cares? <laughs> so she takes him on as an investigator. She's like, you know what? This guy's been... A, she she wants to know, basically she wants to know why Barr asked for him. Like, what's what's the deal? And he gives it a whole backstory. He wanted He joined the army to kill people. He killed four private contractors who just so happened to be on like had recently come off of a what what they call it a, a rape something um rape fest rape fest that's what it was yeah yeah, yeah. I think and it was he a rape fest. accidentally killed that's him. that's really the only way he got off was like he killed bad he, people he killed those four dudes and they just happened to be raping people so they like yeah. the company just swept it under the rug the military discharged him and and i I've, got i have a friend free. that's my age mm-hmm. not so i have a friend that's around my age who was a sniper same thing the whole thing is like he shot like 500 rounds a day mm-hmm. practice he was ready never got to use it and i have a friend that did that and he was like i was so relieved i didn't have to kill anyone he said but there's an ounce of me that's like i trained so much for this i wanted to what shoot am I, something. yeah what like, am i supposed to do with it um, and that that guy, I feel bad for him, man. He's had a rough post military life. But yeah. he's like, that messed me up mentally. Of just like, I trained to do this job, I didn't get to do it. And he's like, I I felt like a cattle dog that gets has a job and then gets put in a home. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's dark. Uh, but yeah, I like, they train you. Good, but like, they that's they mental crap, man. Train you day after day how to kill somebody, and then sorry, you don't get to. Hey, uh, but you think, uh, Preston? Do you think killing a man is different than killing a woman? No, it's or killing it's a, a person. It's a different way to kill a woman than a man, though, right? You have to pull the trigger a different way. There you go. That's the worst joke I could give you. Thank you. Said that in tenth grade in my speech class because I didn't prepare a speech and said that joke and I made an F. Thank you. As you should have. <laughs> oh no, dude! I passed the class, but I. 
Uh, so he's investigating now, but his his uh, ultimatum to her is uh, go and talk to the victim's families and see what you can find. And this is some of the best part of like the conversation she has with that girl's dad. Yeah, that's intense. Yeah, that's um, intense. And I said the first time in the theaters, I said, "Dear Lord, do not show the next four people. Just call it here. I don't want to watch mm-hmm. this anymore." But, but we 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 get a lot of those uh the the person she did we saw her interview was the dad of the nanny uh with the little girl um which thankfully they didn't show i don't know if the the little girl died too or not no um, she makes it she makes the it the little girl uh, makes it it's just her yeah, nanny the nanny throws her into the bushes gotcha. before she gets pelted i think mm-hmm. which th- thankfully they don't show her getting shot um dude i saw that girl in the opening and went i don't remember this and i don't want to see this yeah i I was that's what i was too but he kills a woman that's going to to sue a construction company um a guy that um bought roses on his way to work um a, a, a woman a woman that bought a watch for her husband in cash in cash um and then a single mother that was buying baseball tickets for her son because he had done so well in school. And a babysitter. The babysitter, the, the nanny and the little girl. I uh, I absolutely love, you know who Jack Reacher is from that. that I, I think you're about to get there of her assessment is, look at all these victims. Isn't that so sad? Mm-hmm. And she tells him, like, you know, all, what we just said. Mm-hmm. Jack Reacher immediately goes... Yeah, I think that he was. She was having an affair with him because she kept walking, yeah, and like lays out the whole other side of things. I'm like, man, I kind of like when I'm hiring people. This is hey, this is a plug. You want to work for me? Call me. Um, like I want to. I want that. Like don't don't look at one side of this crap. But it was nice, like because he he points out like no, if you're buying flowers for your wife, you buy those on the way home from work. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, and and your anniversary with your husband's on Saturday and you don't want to put it on the credit card, it's not going to show up on the bill for another month. Yeah, and then you're going to know it. He's going to know what that was. So it's like... Yeah. he, But he he picks that whole thing apart and he's like, the real victim, the real intended victim is in there somewhere. Because at this point, he's kind of figured out like... There was a target. So, yeah, there was a target. Something's a little screwy with this. He may not have done it. Because um, he goes on to explain like... Barr was not as skilled. It was wasn't a very skilled shooter. Like even no, in that alley, he got lucky. yeah, he, got lucky. He, he had perfect conditions. He yeah, he had perfect conditions. conditions which yeah, it explains a lot because there's a scene I forgot where he's on a bridge, just hanging mm-hmm. out, and he's tailed. He's been tailed this whole time. Sorry. Yeah, we don't know who, but the bad guys are tailing him. Because yeah, because Tom uh, Jack Reacher has gone to the bridge and surveyed the area, and he's gone to that parking garage and looked, and he's like. Barr would have known, even as, like, because, like, when he's, like, training, they drill into you, like, muscle memory. And even that makes even the average person, like, just not have to think in a situation like that. And he's, like, Barr would have stopped on the bridge and opened the van and oh, shot yeah. from within the van with all those people in a line not spread out like that. And he, th- that I, way... Uh, it brings up that case of like the the casings wouldn't be there like they would be in the van there's no evidence to collect do you think this movie would have been just as good if there's no action scenes and it was just jack reacher breaking that down i think it could have been yeah i know that's a weird question that's what i've been trying to figure out i think we've gotten really really i mean john wick did it we have great action now, mm-hmm. but some of it's over the top, which is fine. But it's like, are we doing cool stuff or is it thoughtful stuff? I don't know. Well, I think even I don't know in like going on here, but. even in the but I I kind of know what you're going getting at. Even in the Jack Reacher books, like he's got he's going to fight somebody. Like, oh that's yeah, just, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. <laughs> which Jack again, Re- I, I'm going to try not to say it, like the Amazon series. I do. I think. 
What'd you call it? Did you call it dad movie? Dad show? It's a, it's, it's, and that's what this is, is a dad movie. And right. that's a, that's a dad TV show. It's a dad book. Like the entire character of Jack Reacher is a dad character. <laughs> it's like Tom Clancy books. Like, yeah. It's like a, a guy book. that's like off on his own, unconnected from the world, just rambling around the country. Yeah. Like, Keep talking to me, Preston. It's a Talk it's a dad fantasy. Like <laughs> Talk dirty, Preston. Keep <laughs> saying that. Um, what? <laughs> okay. Anyways, yeah. Um, so, yeah. So you, now you've got the whole frame. You've got mm-hmm. exactly why he thinks Barr's innocent. Mm-hmm. You've got, which also he's been tailed, and she's losing hope because her dad approaches her is like, "You're an idiot." And I love how they set him up to be the guy that's bad. Yeah, like where they try to make you think he's the one that's bad. Yeah, I believed it again watching it this time. I totally yeah. forgot. I'm like, oh, yeah, definitely the white guy. And so, um, yeah, Tom, Tom Jack, Jack Reacher, we know his actual name because that's the title of the movie. Uh, he goes to eat uh, to a bar to get something to eat. And uh, right, sorry, we glitzed over this whole brilliant. Well, it, it all happens at the same time. Yeah. Um, because he's getting too close, and this the people that set up this conspiracy they want him gone. Uh, so he, he uh gets set up at a bar, like a girl comes over and flirts with him, and he's supposed to be creepy or whatever. And these dudes just like, and he he clocks it a mile away, yeah, yeah, right away. I like, love that response. She's like, "My name's Sandy." And he's like, "So was I last week in Florida." Like, <laughs> I did. Like, I, I wish I could be that quick. Just mm-hmm. let me watch my words. Just screw with people. Just make them yeah. mad. Just why are you bothering off for me, no dude? reason? <laughs> Why'd you just run into my buggy at Publix? Now I'm gonna mess with you. Um, and so, and so, like that. All these these like five dudes come up claiming to be her brother, and. uh they want to go outside yeah, and talk fight. About my brother. Let's talk about brothers and sisters again. Yeah. Mm, no. Dead giveaway. Uh, <laughs> he asks. He asks her, "Is she a good kisser?" Well, like he's just fucking with him the whole time, the entire time. He's like, "All right, go pay your bill." He's like, "Well, I'll, I'll do that after." He's like, "No." <laughs> I I worked in. I'm just, I, whatever. I'm just gonna. I'm not gonna say crap. But like, I worked bouncing once mm-hmm. for a, like a summer. It was fun. I was underage. I got paid cash, but I was underage, and that's how I stopped bouncing. When someone asked to see my ID, while well, I'm checking everyone else's, there was a dude once that picked a fight in a bar, and it's Clemson. Like it's college people, but there was a dude. Some frat guys picked on him. The guy said, "Close your tab." And everyone froze. And all the frat guys went, you know what, actually, we're okay. We're okay. I'm sorry to bother you. We'll pay for your tab, actually. And the guy goes to the bartender. I walked over there of like, oh, something's about to happen. Until the bartender said, I'd have stabbed them MFers in the bathroom and left them in the trough. <laughs> Didn't blink nothing. And I was like, oh, well, hey, I think your time's done for the night, though. <laughs> it's time to go home. Hey, you know, yeah, and I was like, I, I don't want to get killed either. And he goes, Oh, yeah. you're great. You come out, you know. But I, that was, as soon as I heard that line, I'm like, Dude, that's such a good line. Yeah. Close your tab. You're not going to be able to later. So yeah. So he, he goes out, he goes out in the parking lot, and beats these dudes senseless. Also, a sick lineup. It's five against one. He's like, No, it's one against three. Because no, yeah. you, you, I'm gonna take you down first. Then there's gonna be two loyal ones that come after me. And then the other two, they're just going to run off. Tom Cruise sells that, dude. Oh, yeah. I don't know, he if, it's because it. he's in, I don't know if it's because he's insane, actually. Which, by the way, haters going to hate him at the Olympics. That was fun as crap. That was cool. Oh, when he, he jumped off that thing? It was corny. It was ridiculous. But I saw it, it when was. Yeah, America, baby. Woo! At least do something else besides... Uh, I mean, it's just a jump. It's not like... He should have run in like he shouldn't have run along the stadium like Ethan Hunt or something. Oh, dude, if I could watch Tom Cruise run on the Olympics, yeah. <laughs> I mean, um, shoot, sorry, I take us so far here. Um, he gets arrested and yeah, comments up. on the impeccable timing of the police officers. Yeah, 
It's like y'all got Which here I in think, time, fellas. That's a pretty I think good that's response when time. We really started to go. People on the insider about this, like there's mm-hmm. bad stuff. Mm-hmm. Um. But that's where that's really where he starts to suggest that O line archer. That's mm-hmm. the lady's name. That's when we pick up. She was the target. Yeah. After that, because mm-hmm. um, the God, I can't remember the girl's name now. Um, Sandy. I don't. Helen. Oh, the uh, lawyer. The prosecutor. Yeah. The uh, the defendant. Whatever. Because she's also she's like no no why did I do this why did I pick an insane person this mm-hmm. spills all the stuff tells her what everything he knows there and then gives the also take a look at that Chrysler over there been following me all day run the flags mm-hmm. and he writes down Olan Archer mm-hmm. and so then everything starts to really pin itself of oh shoot this is something uh, but because on the, it's the way back is it on the way back. Well, first he, address. first he goes to confront the people that um, put him in that that he got in a fight with. So he goes to the auto parts store and gets, gets, his car. gets a car from Sandy and drives to 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 Jeb's house. But Jeb's missing; all his stuff is torn apart and everything. And his mom's, mom's halfway strung, messed out on the front, st- strung out on the on the porch because Jeb's a meth dealer. By the way, I know uh, not a shock, but I gotta say it. Tom Cruise did all the driving. Yeah, <laughs> I, that blows my mind. Like the dedication, to, like that's like ah, you can man. tell by like those camera movements, like that go up to the car and go away, and they just kind of hold on his face. And people make fun of him, like friends, like. Oh, he has to produce every movie he's in. I'm like, I don't care. He's doing all the work. Yeah, he's he's Tom Cruise. I don't like care. he's like if dude, he's in charge if he's in charge, like he has that power where he can be in charge of what he does. And I think he wants it so he can hang off at an airplane. He's kind of earned it. <laughs> yeah, I don't care. Go for it. It's not it's not a like cocky thing. No, like he won't no. yeah. No. He's he's just made it to the the point in his career where he can decide like who's directing a Mission Impossible movie. <laughs> it's funny you say all this though because I do want at this point to tell you who could have played Jack Reacher who was heavily considered. Okay. Brad Pitt. Of course. Hugh Jackman. Uh huh. Vince Vaughn. Ugh. I could see it. I could see it. Vince Vaughn, I think, has the capability, but no, Jamie Fox and Will huh? Smith. Mm. Yeah. Seems like Jamie Foxx and Will Smith are up for everything together. Dwayne the Rock Johnson pursued it because he said he fits. Of course the he personality. did. Yeah. And I'm about I'm I'm sorry. I'm sick of Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Dude, I'm dude, so oh, fucking dumb. Oh yeah. Yes. 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 <laughs> Preston. Yes. You're on my side. I don't like the rock. The Rock I'm, is overrated. I used to be like, yeah, he's him he's great. Kevin Hart can suck my nuts. Oh, Kevin Hart, I can take your leave, but I'm just so fucking done with The Rock. Like, you don't have to be in everything. No, and he's pretentious. You're not yeah, a good actor. And, no. I mean, like, dude, like, bleh, go wrestle. Ever since I heard wrestler. about, like, that point system they had on the Fast and Furious set with him and Vin Diesel about who got hit when and how much, and who cares, dude? Yeah. I just and how um, long you can lay on your back or whatever. I'm like, this is sounds like children on a playground. <laughs> what are you talking about laying on your back? Because <laughs> that sounds, yeah. um, yeah. Anyway, man, Preston, I knew we were friends, man. God, I knew we were friends. <laughs> you just solidified it, dude. Because everybody I know is like, oh, the Rock is so great. And I'm like, dude, the Rock sucks. I mean, he can he beat me sucks. up. Sucks. He could beat me up. I don't care, but like, at least I'm not dumb. I don't know. I hate him so much. Anyway, yeah, I'm, I just I'm, that yeah. just sent me off. Anyway, yeah, perfect, dude. Yeah. Hey, welcome to the dark side. So he figures <laughs> out that whoever hired Jeb to try to beat him up at the bar, since he messed up, he uh, he he done got sent off to the to the farm. <laughs> 
And yeah, and while, in the meantime, he's got her looking at all of Barr's finances, mm-hmm. um, which he, she gives him, and he's like, "You're looking for a gun range mm-hmm. somewhere near these guys." He fills up every Saturday, so he's got to mm-hmm. be doing that every Saturday. During all of this that has happened, that we've we 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 got to rewind a little bit because this whole thing is being orchestrated by a construction company run by Werner Herzog with one finger <laughs> and Jack Horton. This was the weirdest villain. Was I chewed Chalmers. off my fingers in the prison. He's the same guy that's in the Mandalorian who's the Imperial guy. He's like, I would like to see the baby. I love that actor. I'm going to go and tell you right now. He is Werner Herzog. He's amazing. So phenomenal. He's got a wonderful documentary about volcanoes. It is great. I've watched it and it's fantastic. And he narrates the whole thing. There's a, uh, do you like Daft Punk at all? Yeah. Like disco music? Yeah. I didn't think so. Well, I'm going to say it anyway. (laughs) Um, There's a guy named uh, Jajoria Mordor. Uh, who like he, Donna Summers? Does that ring a gotcha. bell? Yeah, like he made her music. He is disco. Okay, but he's very German and very talk, dude. Him and Werner Harzog. I butchered that name. They have the same voice. I giggled the whole way through this movie because I just kept seeing uh, Georgia Mordor. Yeah, he talks in one of these Daft Punk songs, talking about the synthesizer. Put a click to it, and you get the rhythm of the boom, boom, boom. Uh, I couldn't quit laughing. Sorry. Just fun, a little fun, fun fact. fact one, one more, and then we'll get back into it. Uh, Donna Summer's daughter and her husband have a pretty good band called Johnny Swim. The two of them are pretty good. Did not know that was that. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's um, Donna yeah. Summer's daughter. That makes okay. That makes a lot of sense, actually. Yeah. Wonderful um, band. Great lyricist. Yeah. Anyway. I'm glad you said Werner that. Herzog no spent time in a prison. He's called the Zek, which is yeah, prisoner. R- Russian for prisoner. Um, he chewed also, off his, his fingers. Name, his last name is Chelvik. Chelvik, yeah. Human being. Human prisoner. Um, yeah, he chewed off his fingers, so in loyalty to him, he asked his minions to do the same. And if not, they get a bullet in the head, and that's what happens to our one guy that... Um, Got rid of Jeb. Oh my god! Because they didn't ask this, him to kill him. They didn't want him the, to kill him. What sucks is the villain part of this movie sucks. Yeah. What is this? Yeah. What, like you don't ever understand. What are they actually doing? Well, they 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 explain it. It's money. like they they they. It's basically comes back to money. But they're a construction company that goes into a town, infiltrates it, and and t- buys up all these construction companies to build. And use public funds to build roads and bridges, stuff people don't use really, and then they move on to the next city. That's basically what what it is. It's not a very mustache twirly like villainous mm-hmm. thing, but they kill people if they need to. That's the big thing. And Oline Archer was the intended target because she was suing them to try to keep her husband's company, even though she never really cared about the company when her husband was alive and he recently died, and she wants to keep the company. That's all that is. A yep. lot of exposition for a, a big fight em up, big fight at the end. Um, Tom Cruise goes to said gun range and finds out what gun range he goes to. Let me, let me just go and ask you. Yeah, you go to this. He goes to this gun range. Do you not just get smiley all of a sudden? Like, eh. you're, uh, Robert Duvall is awesome. Oh, yeah, he's great. And as soon as he pops in, I'm like, this movie's got it. We're good. This is great. This is great. And Robert Duvall is, plays an old Marine, and he makes fun of Reacher for being in the Army. And Jack Reacher starts asking more and more questions about, I notice you got some targets up here that seem to be hold taken up. down. Hold up. I miss, we missed something before he goes out of town. Um, Jack Courtney, the idiot, uh, and his goon have killed Sandy. Well, no, that... that Yes, that yeah. does happen before he goes yeah. to the gun range. You're right. You're yeah. right. Yeah. So he, uh, they kill Sandy and they frame Jack Reacher. And it's a really good chase scene. It's awesome. Probably my best trivia fact I got of this. 
um, the guy that did some of the production, not like special effects, but like editing. Right. This is gonna be some. This is gonna be like telephone. His sister doesn't matter. Whatever. A person I know. Um, that's all. At, like Tom Cruise slams into a water barrel at some point, and the car doesn't start. Accident. Pure accident. Tom, the car cut off. He wasn't supposed to actually slam that hard. Car cut off, couldn't start it, and it worked perfect, so they kept it. I love moments like that in movies. Mm -hmm. And that's where, like, having, like, Tom Cruise can drive the car and do it. And he can improv in the middle of it. Yeah. Um, That chain seat was dope. But So now he's on the run, kind of. And that's kind of our giveaway that the detective is the... Yeah, I didn't think about guy. that until this watch. He immediately, Reacher shows up and he just goes, oh, there he is. Draws on him. Yeah. Yeah. Which, there's no point. He doesn't have a reason to... Really all, all, you ha- all, all it is is circumstantial. Sandy's in a dumpster at a hotel that Reacher's <laughs> staying in. Such a sick line, dude. Sandy's in a dumpster at a yeah. hotel. Um, um, yeah. So, so he's going yeah. shooting... And you, like you said, targets missing. Surprise. Mm-hmm. Um, and for any more information, Robert Duvall says you'll have to go and put three in the center of this target and you get one to warm up on. <laughs> and that's a long ass way to go hang a target. Like, yes, it is. Y'all ain't got no damn golf carts. Like, Man. what are we doing? <laughs> Dude, that, that, my dream in life is to have enough land. Where I couldn't do that all day. I've never shot long range rifles. I've never shot a rifle. I just want to do that. I just want to learn how to do that. Shoot seven hundred meter, whatever. I don't know how long the thing was, but it's probably like a hundred, couple hundred yards or something. I don't know. But it's eh, too far. You know, it's like five meters. Um, it's too far so to walk every time. Is all I say. I, mean, I, mean, I do. I do love so a lot. Like, um. Oh, Preston, help me out, man. Um, Val Kilmer was in a movie where he reloads a gun. Okay. <laughs> um, it's it's a he's a bad guy in the movie. They like rob a bank or something. Heat. Not in the movie. Heat. Thank you. That's it. <laughs> I've never seen it. Never seen it. It's great. It's like he, I want to watch it so bad. But it's like Heat. Val Kilmer has a sequence where he reloads a gun. The army, the the Marines, the Navy, show that. They show that movie clip. Wow. Uh, this, like, this is a perfect reload. Tom Cruise rolling with the rifle and loading that bolt action gun is perfect. It's the same thing. I'm pretty sure that some could be rumors now. Like, they show that to people now. Like, this is the right way to do this of single loading bolt action. I, I feel know. like they would just show them in the classroom or wherever. Like, Actually, there. These, these kids going in the military nowadays. I doubt they they're, kids. I, I honestly doubt they're pulling up a clip from Heat. <laughs> now watch Val Kilmer, this bank robber, reload this rifle. <laughs> no, I, well, dude, look it up. Look it up. You'll be shocked. That one's guaranteed. Of this is the perfect reload. Okay. If this isn't the clip this week, I'm gonna crap my pants. <laughs> um, but. Puts three in the court. Hits them. Hits the blacks. And do, do, for some reason, it's not very 100% clear that Duvall knows who really knows that he's Jack Reacher. Doesn't know, know, know he's Jack Reacher, but he knows he gave him a second baseman from the Yankees. Yeah, but no, he says Jack Reacher without Jack Reacher saying he's Jack Reacher. Oh, I didn't even pick up on that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like, because, like, yeah, I mean, Jack Reacher shot at some tournament or some bullshit. I don't know. Oh, that's like, right. Yeah. I was That's like, oh, okay. Thing. Yeah. Sorry, I mean, my whatever. notes say, what is this tournament bullcrap? And I thought I was just sleeping something. Yeah. But that. basically, we figure out that Jack Courtney had been working this so long that he tricked, he, he befriended Jack Barr, and that's how he ended up framing him for these murders. Um, and once, once, uh, Robert Duvall saw Jack Barr's face on the screen on the, on the news. He was he took those down because he knew people yeah. would come ask questions and whatnot, and he didn't want to be involved, which makes sense. 
Which um, at this point he's befriended Duvall, who lets him know he has a security camera, mm. and he spots Jack Courtney. Which those are in gun stores, like it's not a secret. <laughs> I think you. I, I feel like you have to have one. I mean, yeah. Like everybody has a secu- I have a security camera at my house. <laughs> I have two. Yeah. I, anyway. I um, have, yeah. Yeah. So we figure Maybe out. We go, we go into like high gear here. Movie flies at this point. Lawyer gets kidnapped by the detective. She goes and confronts her dad and calls him a traitor. Yeah. Gets agum tasered in the elevator. Mm-hmm. By the detective. <sighs> And the phone conversation that Jack Reacher and Jack Courtney have on the phone is one of the best lines I've ever heard. He's like, I aim to beat you to death and make you drink your blood with your own boot. And God. not only that, <laughs> does it on a payphone and hangs up. And then, like, yeah. That's the funny. That is, I was like, oh my God, this movie's so good. I forgot how good it was, actually. This is great corny but great that's not even corny it's just like oh, okay. oh shit <laughs> well jack's unstable they're going Ooh, on my meeting on thursday i'm gonna say that line to somebody about their it stuff you're gonna drink from your boot uh so he gets I'm robert hard. duvall who's like basically he's an 80 year old man who's basically blind at this point to be a sniper for him in this in this little gravel canyon or whatever Close takes his out eye the whole time, and he's like, yeah. "Saving my night vision." <laughs> yeah, basically, you know, it's it's a it's a typical end of an action movie. Take down the goons. I don't like that he because th- it's never established in Reacher's character that he cares about honor or whatever. Like, I feel like he would put a bullet in Jack Courtney's head as soon as he got to drop on him. Yeah, the fight that was my that's my biggest gripe is like they dropped oh. the now. What what could have worked is he draws on him, goes to pull the trigger, and is empty. But I feel like Jack Reacher would be counting that. Yeah, yeah. So maybe That'd he wait. fakes him out with it and then tosses it and then they fight. But just for him to just toss it to the side, I'm like, no, he doesn't care about honor at this point. Dude, that's that's my least favorite trope in a movie. Oh, yeah, we're gonna fight with honor. No, you're not. It's not realistic. No, it, it. I feel like it kind of worked in John Wick because he was. I think he was actually out of bullets at the no, end of that movie. <laughs> the, the last one? No, the first one. Yes, does work. He was out of bullets. Yeah, because because he, yeah. he fights an old man in in the rain trying to get to a helicopter, but um, kill like, well, like what, takes out everybody because he's Jack takes Reacher. Takes out everybody. No shocker. My opinion. Not a great action scene either. The whole ending, just yeah, kinda, it's fun, but it's yeah, it's just a shootout. Uh, Takes yeah. out the the evil detective from in a pretty good shot. Um, yeah, that was dope. That was fun. Puts a bullet in the in the prisoner's head because, in the words of Samuel Jackson, he's too dangerous to be left alive. <laughs> well, the guy gives the point of like, I will go to jail to be heaven. You American? You, I'm just an old man. Caught in the wrong place at the wrong time. Uh, Pop, pops him when right there. I was a kid. I, I don't know why, but like I wanted to go to Siberia so bad. That is weird because I, I saw pictures of like cold. Was it the Siberian tiger? That was part of it too, probably. But that I was my favorite. Was like, yeah, that was my favorite Transformer on uh, Beast Wars. But it was the best. Tiger Tron. That was the best. Um, I, I think it was like so much snow and isolation. Yeah, I was just intrigued. Like my dad, my family, my dad's family's from Minnesota. Mm. It's like I always heard stories of snow, like you know, ten feet snow. Yeah, I don't know. I always, when I was a little kid, like when I'm when we moved, I remember writing like, "Where's a place you really want to visit?" In fourth grade, and I put Siberia, and the teacher was like, "Um, why didn't you talk to your parents?" <laughs> But Jack Reacher, the conspiracy's busted. Everyone gets justice, and Jack Reacher moves on to the next adventure on the bus. Yeah, he's going to go screw some more hoes. Um, <laughs> we do get Barr doesn't remember anything. Doesn't he remember anything. Mm-hmm. He's willing to 
to admit that he did it because he has problems. Yeah. Um, but they have proof that he didn't. <laughs> yeah. And then this movie ends with Jack Reacher potentially killing a man on a bus. <laughs> yeah, for abusing his spouse. So good for him. I've, guess what? Hey, there's a sequel to this. I've seen it. I don't remember a second. Oh, yeah, there it. is. Yeah. Apart from it opens up with him riding a motorcycle in the garage. I have no memory of it. I just know it's Jack Reacher never go back. Colby Smolders is the main Colby person. Smolders. Yeah. Who else is in it? I'm curious. Uh, it's been a Colby. long time. Colby be smoldering, you know what I mean? <laughs> eh. Eh. Uh, 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 hey, come on, Samuel L. Jackson. Um, yeah, I don't 2016 know. is when that came out. Gosh, I don't remember anything about it. Oh, it's a completely different director. Yeah. That's the one problem. Yeah, you could tell. Never Tom go Cruise. back. Aldous Hodge. Ooh. Yeah. Talent went down on that one. The Zwick brothers, they didn't... I mean, Defiance was awesome. Defiance was huge for them. Who? Oh, no. They did Shakespeare in Love, I think, too. Zwick? Yeah. And The Last Samurai. That's why they're attached. Oh, yeah. It's always going to be somebody that Tom Cruise has worked with. Yeah. He's never going to just... But anyway. I give it a seven and a half for me. Yeah, I think that's where I am too. Like, I, I, I didn't mind it. I thought I would hate it. I thought rewatching this time, I'd go, "Oh, this movie actually sucks." I, I, I had low years. expectations too, but yeah. it was like, "Oh man, no, this is a very well made movie that's interesting." And I really have to, uh, I have to credit Tom Cruise a lot because I feel like Tom Cruise, either input. There's a lot of Tom Cruise isms in this movie. Mm-hmm. But they work. Like they when work. they work, they work. Because we've got I mean, several examples of next week where it doesn't. <laughs> next week we're watching the mummy. Yeah. The failed creature. Dark universe creature is what bird. they called it. Yeah. Thank you. Couldn't remember what it was. Dark universe. Yeah. It it almost started with Luke Evans, Evans Dracula, and they were like, "No, that's not quite it." Uh, Tom Cruise and the Mummy? Mm, no, fail. Johnny Depp was going to be the Invisible Man. Javier Bardem was going to be Frankenstein. Um, I can't remember who was going to be the creature of the Black Lagoon. Um, Probably uh, P. Diddy. <laughs> Angelina Jolie was going to be Frankenstein's bride. Um, what happened to her? She's gone, right? Like She doesn't act anymore. Not really, no. I mean, she did yeah, Eternals right. a couple years ago. Oh, that's right. We watched that dumpster fire, which... Ooh, speaking of dumpster fires, season two, Accolade, canceled. Yep. That was duh. Preston, I watched a couple episodes. It was garbage. There's so many good ideas that were wasted. Can I... Look, can I just go on a rant for a minute? Go for mind it. if I go on a rant? Okay, guys, in this segment, it's called Jake Rants. It could get clipped and edited out, but... Okay, Star Wars fans are predominantly male nerds, right? I guess. Uh, well, yeah. What do we all want to watch, Preston? We want to watch laser sword fights. Mm-hmm. Well, I make weird stories and dumb things. Give us sick laser sword fights. That's all we they need. did. I will say they did have some towards the end of that show. Like, I watched there's a some, couple clips. There's some cool. good yeah. fight scenes in that show. Legitimately good fight scenes. But I shouldn't have to watch five hours of bull crap to watch a cool fight scene. I'm about to take over Disney. Okay, there's, I'm actually running for president. It was not. It was but by no means was it a good show. But I love that they went with quote unquote new with like the high republic and just get us i don't want any more skywalkers ever again in star wars mm-hmm. yeah i'm down with that make new i stories. want either this really old stuff or like new give me give me new give me something different i am so excited i don't know how you're gonna feel about the mandalorian movie I'm lukewarm on it. I hope it's good. It better be good. 
I'm a huge Mandalorian fan. I know the last season was mixed. I know Boba was Fett's like, mixed. Yeah. Um, Boba Fett was terrible. You better get rid of the guy behind you, buddy. The only, the only, Boba the Fett only Disney's problem. I see all this Disney plus bullcrap having like the weird street, cool, hip gang that helps them. What are we that doing? Was, that was what stupid. are we doing? It's Boba Fett. Just let him be the, rad. And why does he want to be like a, a gangster for some reason? I don't. Anyway. Nah, yeah. The only Disney Star Wars I have enjoyed is Bad Batch. I that I have very much. I, there was n- no notes on that. Um, Force Awakens, Last Jedi, first season of The Mandalorian. Yeah. Andor, and the Bad Sorry Batch. Again. That's it. I, you know, man, I I wish that there is a... This is going to be so stupid. I think you're going to get it and other people too, but I wish there's a way to watch something the first time you watch it again. Yeah. Like when Mandalorian came out, dude, I... Oh, man, every episode chills. Just like, this is what I want. This is what I want. Mm-hmm. But... So that... Uh, I, like we kind of already jumped into that segment, but it's uh, what we watching, what we reading, what we uh, doing. Some um, gonna try and finish Curb Your Enthusiasm, actually. Okay. Um, so been watching that pretty heavy. Um, I watched the new Matt Rife comedian stand up. It's not bad. I oh, I, I enjoy how quick he is on his feet. I still don't know if I like him or not. I, and not to defend Matt Rife, but everybody talks about oh, all he puts on his social media stuff is crowd work stuff. So does every other comedian because they yeah. don't want to put their jokes out there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No one. If will, you they, follow they, 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 this whole special is nothing but crowd work. Yeah, if you f- follow any comedian on social media, that's all they do. Sam Morell, all of his stuff on Instagram and stuff is all his crowd work stuff. Um, oddly, I watched, uh, not to be political, but it was just freaking wild. Watched the, uh, Donald Trump and Theo Vaughn podcast. Oh, God. It was entertaining. He had Bernie Sanders on there the other day, too. <laughs> Two episodes before Trump is Sanders. It's crazy. Um, I have man, dude, I feel like I had something good that I watched that was like, oh, this is garbage. I should bring this up, but. I watched a movie that surprised the hell out of me called ISS. The about the International Space Station. Crew three Americans, three Russians in the International Space Station. The documentary or a sci-fi? No, no, it's it's a sci-fi thing kind of. And uh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The okay. world goes into nuclear war while they're in the space station. And yeah. they each well, that, get orders from their government to take over the space station. And who can you trust and who can't you trust? Is it really good? Pretty good. Yeah. I need to watch that. I'm, A lot of unknown people. Glad you uh, brought that up. What else okay. did I watch? Oh, I'm going through. I, I'm on my. Uh, uh, I'm on Moon Knight in my MCU rewatch. I'm going to wait. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to crank that through. That's the one you talked about last week. I'm like, oh, I need to watch Moonwalk. I, mean, I, I Moon went. Knight, I sorry, went Moonwalk. through. I went through Hawkeye last weekend. Pretty How's good. How's it hold up? It's, pretty, yeah. it's pr- actually Fun. a very solid show. If you watch yeah. it, it was not meant. It should have never been a week to week streaming thing. Mm-mm. If you watch it all in a row like I did, way better. I've been watching. Um, Fargo season two. Mm. That's it. Started that, which is great. Um, I don't know, man. I've got, I've finally got some free time in life. So it's kind of weird of like, Oh, I have time to do stuff, but then I don't because it's it's weird. My brain. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about, um, it's about time for me to watch Batman again. Dark Knight. Mm hmm. I skip Batman Begins. I do Dark Knight. I think you should you should watch Batman Begins. 
I, I think I will this year. I didn't last year. Um, I just get this itch, especially to watch Dark Knight Rises. That's my favorite. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. I don't I know like it's that, not as good. I don't like it kind of bogs down for me when it gets to like the when he divides people up on those ferries. On um, for Dark Knight? Yeah. Yeah, it kind of Yeah, it does. Sl- it, does. it slows the movie way down and I'm like, "Oh my gosh, this is uh, why." <laughs> but do you like do you like the next do you like the last of that series? Some people hate it. It's not perfect. I don't know why, but I love it. I don't know what it is. I, 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 mean, I love Bane. I, don't I love it. Bane. I think that's it. Is that's the best Bane I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. He's not clumsy. He's not dumb. He's not like a mindless idiot like he was in the Joel Schumacher movie. <laughs> I need to watch that again. Um, um, that yeah. So next week is oh. unfortunately the Mummy from 2017. I'm gonna be pissed if I like it, which I doubt I will. <laughs> um, you, I've seen it once, and I, have, I said this isn't that bad. Then I thought about it more, and I went, I hated it. This is the one that famously had that IMAX trailer that came out with no audio, <laughs> and it was just Tom Cruise screaming. That was the only audio on the trailer. Probably a better movie than what it was there. Yeah. Uh, so, if you have a suggestion for a movie we should do, you can send that to secondtakemoviespod at gmail.com. You can follow us on Instagram at secondtakemovies. Uh, Jake, do you have any words of wisdom to leave the people with? Hey, pants, dresses, skirts, shorts, uh, smocks, um, whatever. Hey, crap it up. Crap. Layer them britches, bud. Layer crap. them britches. And, uh, crap. Hey, you know what? Treat someone. Do something good for someone. Yeah. Do something yeah. good. Yeah. All right. We'll see you next week with uh, <laughs> the Mummy, not Brendan Fraser, but Tom Cruise. Yeah, we're watching the Tummy. All right. Yeah.